Please join me in welcoming Brian Cott, MD, or we could call you Dr. Brian Cott, couldn't we? We could. We could and we shall. You are the medical director of Tacoma General Stroke Program and volunteer medical expert for the American Stroke Association. Welcome to the City Line this morning. And we know that you have surgery coming up today, so we're hoping <laughs> that you get to finish this segment out before all of you have to run out of here like the house is on fire. With you also is uh, Carissa LeClaire. Carissa, you are the director of Stroke Program Quality Management, Multicare Health System, and volunteer medical expert for the American Stroke Association. Also, welcome to City Line. And man, I gotta tell you, if folks, can they see? Oh, you know, they, they don't have all, all of your um, certifications up. You have an <laughs> alphabet behind your name. It, I mean, all I wanna say is, can I buy a vowel? And we're set. <laughs> it's amazing. And rounding out the comfy couch is this beautiful woman. Lysandra M. Jones, you are a volunteer, but you are so much more than that, but we're not gonna let that out of the bag yet. Um, and you also work with the American Stroke Association. I welcome, do. welcome, it's so good to see you. Thank you. Okay, so let's just get down to the nitty gritty. Dr. Cott, <clears throat> May is American Stroke Month and a time when we talk about stroke and brain health. Can we start with basically what is a stroke once and for all let's get it out there yeah yeah well it's when you talk about stroke yep. it is a it is if you go out and ask people what a stroke is yep. you'll watch people really struggle to tell you what it is some people say well is it a blood clot or it's a bleed right and and it's both of those things and so when you look at stroke it it, it is a complex uh, disease in the sense that it does involve both bleeding and um, blockages, but the reality is, is it's simply defined as it's irreversible damage to the brain tissue. We're so in, showing yeah. some animation here. And yet. so, and that damage can occur either by uh, a clot that occurs in the blood vessel that blocks blood flow and ultimately blocks oxygen to the brain, mm -hmm. or you can get the same type of injury essentially from bleeding into the brain tissue as well. Mm. Both of them, they're different processes, but they, the end result is the same, is that it's permanent or irreversible injury to the brain tissue. Permanent and irreversible. So how common is a stroke? It's very common. Yeah, it's the third leading cause of death in the United States. It's one of the most common cause of people presenting to the emergency department. Um, it's extremely yeah. uh, common. And it's a misconception that it's it's kind of a disease of older people and whatnot. Oh, well, and think again. The reality is is it's actually uh, we're seeing it in all age groups. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, when young people can have strokes, that is correct. So, Carissa, when we think about some people have a higher risk of stroke, can you share some of those risk factors? Because as as Dr. Cott said, sometimes we assign it to oh, you know, this person's ninety and and they're they're at risk for a stroke, when really a 24-year-old can also be at risk for a stroke. Yeah, absolutely. So I think a lot of what you think of a healthy lifestyle um, plays into the risk factors. So blood pressure management and elevated blood pressure is one that we think of um, that people can really work on. Um, weight, obesity, healthy lifestyle, diet, cholesterol, not smoking. So those are all big risk factors that we think of in stroke. I, I love that. It, so let's get, get on that prevention side now that we've kind of defined it and talked about exactly technically what it is and who's at risk. Um, there are some things that we can do to prevent, to prevent stroke as we list out the reasons why we have strokes. Share some steps with us that an individual can take, anyone from any age. Absolutely, I think it's important to partner with your medical team and know your risk factors. So knowing what your blood pressure is and doing something about it. Um, healthy lifestyle, exercise, healthy diet, not smoking. Um, so those are all things that you know we think of and we really promote for healthy lifestyle choices. And and I want to I want to push back just a little bit on this and ask you how how important is family history? So family history is important. Um, some of those things are non modifiable with your yeah, family and your yeah. genetics, but there's still a lot of things you can do that we consider modifiable risk factors. So we really encourage people to see their healthcare professionals and know their risk factors um, to work on those 
modifiable risk factors that can significantly lower your risk. Absolutely. And yet on the flip side, I have um, a dear friend who uh, grew up in a family of athletes, runners, triathlons, and at the age of 32, she has a stroke and had no symptoms. Nobody in the family had ever had something like that. So it, it, it does have that silent killer edge to it, doesn't it? And, and also I want to talk about some of the symptoms that, that happen that we ignore. I remember 20 years ago when we started talking about strokes and heart attacks and pains in our face and in our arms and our chest. And, and it was a lot of it came out of do we really know the signs of when we're in trouble? Um, so when we think about um, family history, it is not always a precursor, is it? Anybody who is normally healthy can have a stroke. Yeah, there are for sure some risk factors that lead in that you can't modify and cardiac conditions if you're not aware of certain things like that. But mm -hmm. I think, again, partnering with your medical team and knowing your like health you status. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Coming in, keeping your appointment. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, <laughs> I think we'll probably lead into this, but knowing the signs of stroke and yeah. Yeah. is going to be a huge part of it as well. Huge, huge. My love, my beautiful woman down there at the end <laughs> of the couch. Um, I know, um, because I know you, yeah. and I know your heart, and I know your story, stroke has touched your family. It has. Um, and can you share um, your story with us? Yeah. On September 4th of 2013, I got a phone call that no sibling ever, ever wants to receive, and it was from my nephew letting me know that my sister Alicia was having a medical emergency and was being rushed to the hospital. And of course, we didn't know what it was then. Um, and so I instantly went into panic mode because she was perfectly healthy, 46 years old, never sick, exercised every day, ate healthy, did all the right things. And so for her to be having a medical emergency, instant panic mode oh. for me. And so, yeah. That's Look at that it. smile. That's my sister. So and so we got to the hospital and we were told that she'd had a stroke um, uh, and it was brought on by a blood clot that was affecting two different parts of her brain. And so, of course, they gave her the TPA immediately yes. to try to bust up the clot, but it didn't work completely. There was still a large part of the clot on the right side of her brain and it was affecting her left side. And so um, they transported her from Good Sam to Tacoma General, mm -hmm. wheeled her in for surgery. And um, we played the waiting game after that. And it was about five days later that they told us that the damage to her brain was too much. And as a family, we made the decision to turn off all the machines and um, allow her to rest in peace. And it was the worst day of my life. But I knew that I had to find a way to honor her memory. And so my family and I decided that we were going to educate ourselves on the signs and the symptoms of stroke and then spread that information around our community so that people know what to look for. Even before the medical emergency happens, there are signs. You bet. In hindsight, I can see that there were signs with my sister. We didn't know what was to come, but now I can see her body was telling her something was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I want to, first off, thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you. You are, it's, it's a hard story to tell. Yeah. And I have a similar story with my sister who died of a stroke at the age of 45 in her yeah. sleep. Yeah. And it never gets easier to tell. And every time I tell it, I, I want to go. And that was a mistake. Somebody made a mistake someplace. She was mm -hmm. too young. Yeah. But I also saw the signs of my sister in terms of her health, her stress, yeah. and all of that. So you talk about you knew you mm -hmm. had to make a difference yes. in your family. Yeah. So let's talk about how did you go about getting that family together and mm -hmm. saying, what do we do here, people? Mm -hmm. do, we, do we have a fundraiser? Do we volunteer? Do yeah. we make t-shirts? How did that all come about? We started doing all of that a year later. We hosted our first family um, physical fitness event in the park where she used to walk every day. She used to walk the track. And um, we invited families to come out. We had medical experts. We had stroke survivors. 
um, we had information from the American Stroke Association that we were handing out, and we talked about how to recognize the signs and the symptoms of stroke. We talked about the acronym FAST. Yes. And um, we and just here wanted it is. to, there it is. F is for your face. Is mm -hmm. the person's face drooping? Does it look uneven? Um, a is for arm weakness. Is the person's arm, is it numb? Are they unable to use it? Um, S is for speech. Is their speech slurred? Are, are you having trouble understanding what they're saying? And of course, T is for time. Anytime you see these symptoms, you want to call 911 right away. And we wanted to get the word out about that, and we've been able to do that. I love that. I cannot believe we only have two minutes left in this segment, and we have so much more to cover. Um, so, Dr. Cott, I want to I want to come to you and ask this question of: Are there treatments for a stroke? For her sister, it was too late. Yeah. yeah. But leave us with some good news. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a lot of treatment with stroke that is on a rapid development, um, and in particular. Uh, we're able to now utilize techniques where we can actually go up inside the brain and remove clots and whatnot. But all of those treatments really go back to what she was saying is yeah. it's all about, I mean, we can pull clots out, but if the damage is already done, right. there's not much you can do with that. And yeah. so that's why the sooner we can get to these treatments, and, and the treatments are interesting and in they're fun to show, but the reality is, is what she was saying is the most important, and that is recognizing the symptoms, yeah. doing something about it, yeah. you know, talking with your doctor, all of these things. And as, as us doing a, a better job of educating our community about stroke so that still the most common thing people do when they have symptoms is they go take a nap. You know, oh, when people well, have- I'm gonna lay down, I'll right, feel better. Yeah. On, the, on the opposite side, if you have chest pain, you call 911. So there's, right. there's a gap there that we need to put <laughs> together. Yeah, and there so, is. Um, so anyways, coming back to that, that the, the procedures, there's a lot of exciting research that's going on, but the biggest effort still should be in what we're doing to get patients to the hospital when they have symptoms, those pre-symptoms that they're feeling, exactly. all of those things. Yeah. I have a, um, a, a, a mother-in-law who just passed, and um, my wife was quick enough to see the droop, and she was 85, and we took her in. Mm -hmm. um, and But it was just like, wow. I mean like with your sister, yeah. you see those things. Yeah. And it's like, once it happens to you once, it will never happen to you again like mm -hmm. that because you are they, you carry those in your heart. That's right. Thank you, all three of you, for being Thank here you. today Thank and helping you. educate us on how yeah. to be healthier and happier and live longer. And I um, want to have you back on the couch sooner than later. Thank you. Thank you. In the City Line Comfort Cafe, it looks like we have, oh my goodness, Marisa Buss and our infamous Mayor Woodards. We're not going to tell you what they're going to talk about, but we'll be right back after this quick break.